Hey everyone, it's me Lauren with Bold Notion Quilting and I wanted to take a minute to talk to you a bit today about drawing wheels. These fancy little contraptions are fantastic for allowing you to kind of map and mark out your designs either on your quilt top or through another device. That's why they come in four different sizes. You're going to see that we have four different sizes so when you open them up on boldnotionquilting.com you get a pack of four and they all come in four different colors. You will get a yellow that has a P for pen a hot pink that has an F for fine tip, an M for marker, and D in case you got those big fat dry erase markers. Now of course we're not going to use pens and markers and dry erase and different things on our fabrics, but we are going to use different methods for marking and mapping out our quilt tops. And I want to show you how these little bad boys can help you through any stage of your process. All right, so we've got our four ruler wheel discs here, and I want to show you how these work. So they're really made for mapping so that you can work on your quilt top with confidence. There are many people who like to practice on paper or cardstock or even poster board like I'm showing you here that want to see and make sure that these designs will fit or just practice doing different things with them. So I told you all we have a couple different sizes. I often will use my ruler wheel and my rulers to make sure that a specific ruler work design will fit, especially when I have a specialty ruler that I wanna see that it's going to fit. You can see here, I wanted to check on these two inch hexagons to see if they would fit in my two inch hexagon sashing. And then also with my border buddy circle ruler that I have, I checked that to see how it would fit with my one and three quarter inch circles in my sashing as well. So the idea behind this is to line up, if you have a good ruler, you've got lots of great markings to line it up, is to line up your ruler with your sashing so that we can draw and get a feel for how our design's gonna look. Now when you draw without a drawing wheel and you line things up, you're going to get a design. Oh, I might need a Sharpie for this. that's gonna be much bigger than the actual outcome product. You also wanna get a feel for how far your needle's gonna to have to be from this previously stitched circle so that they touch and nest as I've done here. So you have to gauge that quarter of an inch because when your needle is stitching from the edge of your ruler, it's a quarter of an inch away from the edge of the ruler. So this allows you to get a feel for where your needle's actually going to go. So I line this up in the center. I'm gonna line this up with the edge of my circle. And then as I draw, I can see where that circle is going to end up. Now, oh, I was using the fine tip marker. Let me use the pen one. You wanna get the one for pen when you're using friction pens so that your pen tip can get all the way down on the bottom. So we're gonna go ahead and move this over. I'm gonna gauge that uh, half of an inch, that quarter of an inch. I can put my pen right on the edge of my circle, move my ruler over, and then see how that next design is going to stitch. So you can see that there's a big difference between practicing with the edge of your ruler and then practicing with the ruler wheel. You can get very consistent spacing and, and gauging things. There are many of us who would use a plexiglass, which can be fantastic. It's a clear piece of plastic you can get from Home Depot or Lowe's and you can lay it over your quilt top. Just pretend that these are our sashings. You can grab a dry erase marker and you can see which hole it's going to fit into. So we'll grab the dry erase marker because it's a, it's a larger, fatter hole. You can also try the marker one. Since all dry erase are different, you can fit a chisel tip in this one, but you can't fit a chisel tip in this one. So we'll go ahead and get out one of our rulers. We'll try doing like half a hexagon and see how that works out. So I'm going to line up 
the corners of my hexagon with the edge of my sashing. I'm going to put this down and then I'm going to just mark. So this allows me to use a different tool to practice doing my quilting designs with. So that's why your drawing wheels are all different sizes because I wanted you to be able to practice with all the different tools that you need. Now if you're going to be mapping and marking, do be sure to put on your ruler base so that you have a good foundation for how to map and mark your machine. Okay, just slide that on. Okay, nice good snug fit and then we're just going to slide it onto our machine. I'm just going to use a template that I have just so I can mark a quilt block and a square. Now again, I said I would use friction pens on anything that mattered and this is just a practice piece. Be careful if your machine's going to go over a template that you don't accidentally turn it on. Okay. And then the cool thing about this template is that I can mark my 45s and my 90s. This is the web weaver template from my web weaver quilt pattern. Okay, so now I've got a quilt block and I got to decide what do I want to quilt on it. I'm not sure I've got this curved ruler or even a hexagon ruler. What can I do with that in here? Well, let's audition some designs. It takes a lot less time to audition a design than it does to stitch something in and rip something out. So we want to make sure to get the P for pen because I'm using a friction pen. And I'm just going to practice seeing what it would look like if I line up my corners. And I'll kind of guess what's going to be a quarter of an inch away. Go ahead and put my pen in. And I'm not quite there, so I'll move it down a little bit. We've got one outside design, so if I stitch this line on the outside of this ruler, that's what it's going to look like. Let's do that one more time. down okay so now I can see that I'm gonna get this neat kind of diamond design if I use the edge of my hexagon ruler in my block now I can continue to do different things and just kind of see what they would look like how they cross over what would happen I could use the inside of my hexagon so see how this hexagon fits in both corners but this one goes over probably by more than half an inch on either side. This one probably won't work to fit, but I'll never know if I can overlap with this, but let's give it a try. Okay. So I know that that hexagon doesn't fit in that diamond shape, but that was what I was hoping for. So I'll know that I'll have to use now the smaller one if I want to. So that's how I would go through and just kind of play with and map something either on paper, on my quilt block or whatever, and then I would just go ahead and stitch it. So I like this diamond design. Let us go ahead and stitch that first. Okay, I'll line up my ruler quarter of an inch away. And the same thing. 
Make sure you have proper ruler grip on your ruler as you're quilting. Okay. And then I can see that this is going to make that neat diamond design. If I wanted to take it one step further, I could try mapping out some other designs here. So let's take it on the right side. Let's go tapered from in and let's have it, nope, let's have it fold out. So it's gonna make a really cool fan or maybe a really neat kind of deck of cards design. But it allows me to really line up my ruler with ease a lot better. So I line it up and I'm lining that point right in the tip of that arrow, quarter of an inch away. And now you can see that I was able to get a very interesting design out of something I wasn't sure was really going to work in that block. And I just auditioned it, and now I'll go in and fill it. Let's put it on manual mode. So now you can see the benefit of taking your ruler, taking a drawing wheel, and practicing with different designs, either in a quilt block or otherwise. So this is super eclectic, different, it's weird, I know, but it's definitely something that's doable that maybe you end up with something you never thought you'd be able to stitch on there because you took the time to practice. Now, had I drawn these and not liked them, if I was using a air and water soluble or a water soluble, I could spritz it with marker or with water, come back in about 15 minutes, come back and try again. And it takes way longer to rip all of this out because I tried it stitching it than erasing it with a little bit of water. And these allow me to try them on multiple forms. If I want to use markers for a dry erase, if I want to use a uh, pen for friction, or if I want to use a fine tip air and water soluble, I can. The pen also works well with the medium tipped air and water soluble markers as well. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to put them uh, in the comments below. Again, I'm Lauren with Bold Notion Quilting, and I hope that understanding the use of these ruler wheels can really help you to kind of open up your mind and try some different things maybe with some tools you have but maybe you weren't sure you're going to use uh, this is my bold notion quilting border buddy hexagon ruler that i love it's made for borders and sashings and all kinds of wonderful things so it's nice to just play with the tools that we have and make them work best for us have a wonderful day please like share and subscribe to the channel happy quilting y'all bye